Have you ever asked yourself, what is my purpose in being a Christian? Is it just to get salvation for myself? Am I supposed to be doing something? Let's understand the importance of what we do during the week. We'll look at Mark 6, what an apostle is and our mission. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they'd done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place, all by yourselves, and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his coat. And all who touched it were healed. The messengers return from a mission. The word apostle simply means a delegate, a missionary, an envoy, or a messenger. The twelve had a special place, but the word apostle was used of others in the Bible. They reported all that they'd done and taught. What they taught was the message with which they were sent. It's not their message, but the message of the sender, Jesus. What would happen if we began each church service with reports of what we had done spreading Jesus' message during the week? The apostolic tradition is not just a set of doctrines, but being sent out. The reason for the existence of the church is going out. The reason for their retreat was to recuperate for the next mission. The reason for attending church is to recharge for the mission of the coming week. What kind of vacation is best? The commercial world entices us to all kinds of exotic and expensive vacations so they can make a living. But is that the kind of vacation we really need? Is it to experience new cultures and excitement? That's okay, and it has its place. What is the purpose of a vacation? What kind of vacation do we really need? Most of us occasionally need a rest. Time out. In Mark 6... Jesus introduced the concept of quiet place to get some rest. Rest for the body and mind are good. But the author of Hebrews described a place, the promised land, and a time, the weekly rest, as not that true, real rest. Each of them was a mere foretaste of a place of eternal rest with God. Another important aspect of rest is time with God. And an important part of that time is in the company of the saints at church each week. Why go to church? Statistics prove that those who attend church regularly actually live longer, and so do their children. Regular church attendance also reduces our children's risk of involvement in drunkenness, drugs, or suicide. They rebound faster from depression, have lower risk of crime, better odds for a happy life, have a nurturing family atmosphere and better odds of an active life in their adult years. I go to church to be a part of God's kingdom on earth, to live and learn the gospel, to worship God, to encourage and be encouraged, to pray and to feed my soul. Even in the most boring sermons I hear God's voice. I learn to forgive and be forgiven, to rest with the disciples of Jesus and touch his cloak, that I may be healed. The most important purpose of the Church of Jesus Christ is mission, beginning with our immediate neighborhoods and into all the world. Christianity always grows on the edges, at the intersection of cultures. The original messengers went to new languages and new ethnic groups. Most of them did not just stick with their own kind, but were willing to cross the lines for the sake of the gospel. Have we thought about it from God's point of view? Some of them will become Christians and take Jesus back to their own peoples. The church has no room for xenophobia. 
an unreasonable fear of strangers or foreigners. We're not meant to be an exclusive club, but an inclusive, multicultural and ever-growing family. No matter what culture the church is introduced into, there's always a common ingredient, Jesus. Like the original messengers, the Twelve, we too need spiritual retreat. The purpose of a spiritual vacation is not the meaningless pursuit of self-indulgence, but a recharging of the batteries for the next mission. Being exposed to other cultures means a risk. Many people are not willing to take that risk, but we must be willing to risk everything for the gospel's sake. Going into other cultures, we face challenges to our faith. People will ask us pointed questions, threaten us, get angry, and some will be curious. We must become strong in faith. So what did we do last week? What do we have to report to Jesus? Did we spread the message? The word apostle was not originally so much a title as a descriptive term of what people did. It meant a person sent out with a message. In that sense, we're all sent out with a message. Could it be that apostolic succession is wrongly defined? Could it be that all Christians are assigned to go out with a message after having met with Christ each week? Could it be that we've gotten church wrong? Could it be that we're here to be debriefed by Jesus? Are we here as a social club to meet with each other or to meet with Jesus and then leave with a message to take to the world? Fellowship is an important aspect of church life, but the most important part is the message that goes with our lives as we leave. Prejudice is universal. It's found everywhere. What's Jesus' attitude? God loves everyone. There's no political hatred in God's kingdom. In Mark 6, we read how Jesus took much needed time for rest. People followed him and ruined his vacation. How annoying! Yet Jesus looked upon them with pity. They were like sheep without a shepherd. When we look upon people of a different religion, what do we see? We can feel threatened, disgusted, angry, and a whole host of hostile emotions. Do we let politicians decide how we should feel? Or do we see beyond our human fears and view them as God does, sheep without a shepherd? Pastor or shepherd, that's not a popular business title. Imagine a large company with a corporate shepherd. It's not fashionable. Jesus is the great shepherd. He was compassionate towards large crowds who were like sheep without a shepherd. What would corporate life be like if earthly CEOs were caring shepherds? Would they rob mom-and-pop investors of their modest investment portfolios by stealing from them in grossly excessive salaries? Would they feed their flocks crumbs while they dine opulently and sacrifice them all just for greed? Or would they be selfless shepherds like Jesus Christ, the Great Shepherd and CEO of the universe, and be willing to suffer so that others may live? We can't learn to be great shepherds of our businesses unless we're hearing from the Great Shepherd every week. Attending church each week is an important reminder of the Gospel message. An important part of rest is time together as God's people. Let's take a Sunday rest, be at church and get recharged for our mission back into all the world the coming week.